What's going on everybody, it's AG here. What I'm gonna be talking about, pretty simply, the top five teams in each and every Division I conference. We're gonna go basically alphabetical order, so we'll start with the American Conference, then we'll go to the ACC and so on. We're gonna go every conference, whether it's G5, whether it's P4, P5, whatever, the American Conference. All right, so top five in order. I am gonna rank these one through five on each of these. Now, some of these, obviously, you're gonna notice that it's gonna be different from like my tier list rankings, for example. Like last time I know, whenever I did the Big Ten, got a lot of backlash because Rutgers I had in the contender status. I think they are a contender, not necessarily the top five teams. We'll get to them in a second. But basically, I think they're a contender because of their schedule. Do I think they're one of the best five teams in the conference? No. But because of the way their schedule plays out, I think they would have a chance to be a contender. So this is actually a little different than what we've done previously as far as the tier list rankings. But in the American, all right, we'll start at number five, East Carolina. East Carolina, not very good last season, but they have a ton of transfers coming in uh, that are at the P5 level. All right, so they're bringing in a lot of talent from Power 5, Power 4 schools. When you bring that into the American, you're going to have success. Number one, the American's kind of wide open this year. SMU is gone to the ACC. All right, that's number one. That's one of the competitive schools that's gone. Number two, all right, Tulane, Willie Fritz has gone to Houston. All right, so that's a big drop-off from another school that was really high up. UTSA, their quarterback is finally gone, so that's another drop from a team that, you know, would be usually competitive in the American. But that's kind of why East Carolina sneaks in here because it's kind of a wide-open race. All right, I think Memphis is the team to beat. We'll get to them in a second. But East Carolina, I think, brings in enough talent from the P5 level, like I said, that they can kind of have a quick turnaround here this year and be competitive in a wide open conference. Our right, number four, UTSA. All right, UTSA, Jeff Trailer, really good head coach. All right, interviewed for the Texas A&M job. There were some rumors he might get that job. I think he'll probably end up most likely getting the Arkansas job next year whenever Sam Pittman gets fired. That's kind of my guess. But he's going to have question marks on offense with uh, the quarterback Harris gone. But they have loaded up in the transfer portal on defense. So they're going to be stout. They brought in some guys from Alabama, from Texas, uh, so they should be pretty competitive and pretty stout on defense, I think. Our number three, Tulane. Yes, Willie Fritz is gone, but they bring in Troy head coach John Sumrall. All right, John Sumrall has won a ton of games at Troy. And at Tulane, they still, despite losing some pieces from last year, uh, I think they have some pieces to be successful in the American. So not only, like I said, is the American wide open, but they bring back their running back, uh, Makai Hughes. I think Makai Hughes is probably a top 10 running back in the country. Uh, and in the American with SMU gone, like I said, that's one less talent that, you know, would be pretty competitive in the American. Excuse me, I'm going to have to do that a little bit throughout the night. But number two, UC, USF, excuse me, USF, South Florida, kind of a slept on year last year, pretty competitive. All right, so remember, think back to when they played with Alabama. That really wasn't, it was a fluke. Yes, Alabama was a lot better than USF, but it wasn't too much of a fluke. Like, Actually, they were competitive with them for a reason. Uh, I think USF was actually pretty good, but they were a year ahead of schedule. They've got their quarterback back, Byron Brown. He's going to be a force this year in the American at USF. I think they're going to be pretty talented. I think they are one of the teams to beat in the American, and we'll kind of find out early. They have a tougher non-conference, talking about USF. they got a tougher non-con, so we'll see what they're made of pretty soon. All right, number one right now, I've got Memphis in the American Memphis returns a ton from last year. They were pretty good last year, beat Iowa State in the bowl game. But Seth Hennigan is back at quarterback. He's going to put up All-American level numbers. Memphis is going to be pretty good this year. And they play Tennessee, not Tennessee, excuse me, Florida State in the non-con. We're going to know a lot about Memphis really quick and see what they're made of. As of right now, I think Memphis is probably the favorite to be the G5 representative in the college football playoff, even with a loss to Florida State, unless Florida State just absolutely tanks. There's no reason Memphis can't make a run of the G5, uh, excuse me, as a G5 representative in the college football playoff, even with one loss. Thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all guys. Till next time, AG, hey, out.